Hey, Brenton here from Effortless Swimming. It's been a while since we've done an analysis of an intermediate swimmer as opposed to an elite level swimmer. So we're gonna take a look at a triathlete today who swim time is 31 for the half Ironman and 103 for the full distance Ironman. So pretty tidy swim time and he's qualified for world champs next year. So we're gonna see, is there anything here that might help him over the next 12 months, bring that time down perhaps to uh, you know, well, sub 30 would be the goal, but then ideally around the sort of mid 20s um, to be really competitive there. So let's take a look. Now, one of the things that you might notice here is that if we have a look at the head position, might be a little bit high if this is where he would normally look. And you can see where the eyes are and where the chin is in particular. Uh, eyes are a little far forwards. The range that we usually want to go for is that zero to, to 45. And I like triathletes looking slightly forwards because you have better awareness about what's in front of you if you do look slightly forwards. But I think here is just a little too far. And the reason being, see where the chin's at? When the chin comes that far forwards, it's, we typically find that this lower back tends to arch a bit and that can sort of push the hips down. Now, the head position does not dictate the body position. It contributes to it. It's certainly a factor, but it is not the only determining factor with the rest of your, your body. So yes, it might help bring the hips and the legs up a little bit if he changes that head position. But too often I find that people um, feel or they, they think that the head position is the only factor, but when it's not really the case. But that'd be the first thing, get the head down a little bit. Like this is actually pretty good through here. That's within the range, slightly better position through the, the head, neck and spine. Um, so a little bit better there. Now, the if we're looking at what are the main things that we really wanna focus on, in terms of increasing the speed, I'd be looking to basically improve the, the catch. To me, that would be one of the, the primary things because if we look at it here from the side, you'll see as we go down to the end of the catch, he's still getting good propulsion and like you've gotta be swimming reasonably well to do those times that he's doing. But if we have a look at the catch, you'll see it's perhaps in a maybe a slightly dropped position or dropped elbow position or even like a straight arm catch through here. But he's, essentially he's going down a little bit deep and straight through the first part of the stroke. What we'd wanna to work towards would be that somewhat of a high elbow position. And the way we determine that is if we draw that line from the shoulder to the fingertips, like we've done there, we'd want the elbow to be anywhere above it, anywhere in this sort of range. So that would perhaps look like that. And if you've watched our videos for a while, you know you don't need to go really extreme with this because I don't want you swimming with this awkward, uncomfortable position with your shoulders and your arms because it's not sustainable, for you know, particularly for most adults. So all we want to do is get anywhere in this high elbow uh, range. If we look at this here, you can see, all right, his forearm and hand would be better positioned to press back on the water if he could get there. So what is causing the arm to go down a bit too deep and straight? The thing that stands out to me here, it's, it's, it's two things. One is there's a little bit of crossover happening. And I think that's perhaps causing him to over rotate a bit through the shoulders, which is kind of, kind of forcing him to just press down mostly through the front part of the catch. So let's have a look at that. Now from the front here, if we slow this down, you'll see he enters actually pretty nicely. Like he's entering what we would classify as swimming on the train tracks, like draw some lines in front of the ears. That's where we want to enter and extend forwards to. So he enters nicely there, but then it's that last bit that just seems to track across the center here. And you'll see, we get this little bit of a curve through the body. So we can see, all right, we're getting a bit of snaking happening. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's like, it's just not going to be as efficient as if you can keep that arm directly in line with the shoulder. So it crosses over a bit on the, on the right, similar thing on the left, nice entry there comes across and then again, you can just see that little bit of a drift over and he's crossed the center line here, which is what we want to avoid doing. And I, I would imagine that crossover of the center line is causing the shoulders to then go a little bit too far on the side, causing him to roll further than what he needs. So if we have a look at this front view again, which I think we get a pretty good one here, have a look at how far his shoulders are on the side there. Now we're not directly front on, so it's not the best sort of way to, to measure it. Yeah, still not the best way to measure it. Let's say he's going to about 50 degrees at his furthest point of rotation, roughly. Um, that's more than what we want. We'll typically see most elite swimmers are around 35 degrees, give or take a bit. 
So when you go too far on the side, and when this shoulder right here goes down a little bit too low, and it's still sort of, you're still on the side quite a bit as you're going through the catch, it's quite difficult to get a good catch position because when your shoulders are there, a bit of strain, that rotator cuff, it just doesn't really make it easy to, to get a good catch there. So the, the two things I'd be looking to just change there a little bit here, it's kind of three, but the first one will be, all right, let's get those arms out, let's get them on the train tracks. He might need to feel like he's quite wide to fix it. Uh, so usually when I'm working with people at clinics and we've just started back with those, which is great, um, we'll see that, all right, people who are crossing over usually need to overdo how wide they feel to fix that. So he might just need to feel like he's perhaps swimming out here is the first thing. Secondly, he might need to feel like he's staying a bit flatter with his rotation. There's a really good approach to doing this that I've found works for most people. Instead of thinking of it as, as rolling side to side for your rotation, think of it as rotating forwards, meaning when you enter the water, okay, think of yourself as rotating forwards out here like you're reaching for that wall as opposed to maybe trying to get side to side. It's that extra side to side roll that causes you to get into a position that compromises your catch. So number two would be, all right, think of yourself as rotating forwards. You'll still get some like rotation there, but it will get you to that better point where it's about 35 degrees instead of perhaps 50 there. The other thing, once he's kind of got that in place, and look, you could do that with some drills if you wanted. Um, I would do something like a, a front kick drill, 25 meters of front kick drill, hands in line with the shoulders, go straight into some swim, just trying to keep on those train tracks. Once he's got that, the other thing you may need to do is just soften the arms a little bit through the reach phase. I'll explain what I mean here. So you can see as he's reaching forwards, the arm and the shoulder sort of, the, the elbow kind of stays a little bit locked out, like it's completely straight. So it's a little bit sort of stiff through that part there, which doesn't allow you to get that eventually a little bit of bend in the elbow. So he might need to soften his arm a bit through that reach phase. So that might mean maybe he's trying to reach out too far, like overreaching just a bit, which is causing that elbow to get locked out all the way through the catch. Or um, it might just be a matter of just relaxing it um, and yeah, not trying to reach out quite as quite as far there. Because when he does that, that will allow him to obviously get a better catch position, which would be somewhere like this. Uh, at the moment, with that elbow locked out, you just you can't do it. So yeah, it'd be a couple of things, and particularly for the catch, we like to use some drills to do you know to to fix that. And here, I'd I'd be looking to do something like that slow doggy scoop drill that I recommend quite often, um, just to help him get used to a bit of that elbow bend, to help him sort of soften the arms a bit so they're not straight and stiff all the way through, and um, and that will then sort of just get him into some better positions. Back half the stroke looks pretty good here. Like he's pressing back just past the hip, coming in pretty well through there. So it's really just that front end that we'd want to focus on. And I imagine he's got a pretty good probably stroke rate when he's racing. Like here, I reckon he's just um, just sort of you know, cruising through here at what might be a bit more of... No, it's actually not a bad stroke rate. So look, that would be the, the main things that... He could do here so we talked about head position that'd be first thing we might just want to tweak a bit but then after that it's all about get on the train tracks rotate forwards and um, then we'll go through some drills to help just get the arms in the right position as he's going through and like you can keep it that simple because we just want to look at those things that are actually going to move the needle there's so much you can think about but really we just want to focus on what will actually make the difference for him now, uh, in terms of you know, what should you work on, have a look at our five core principles, um, which I'll put a link to below. That covers the order that most people should go through things in. And um, what we've done is we've just released our eight-week faster freestyle course as an individual um, course that you can purchase and go through. So I'll put a link to that below. And that's got great structure for you to be able to work on each aspect of the stroke, whether you struggle with your breathing, whether you struggle with your uh, alignment or rotation and uh, we've got a lot of people going through that at the moment so you can purchase the uh, eight-week course and start improving your freestyle today so i'll put a link to that below 
Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And uh, we do these videos on a pretty regular basis. And my goal here is just to educate you on what I've seen to work well for a lot of swimmers and triathletes to help them become faster, more efficient swimmers, because that's what, that's my background. That's what I, I do on a daily basis. And um, just looking to share some of the information or some of the stuff I've picked up over the last 15 years of coaching. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next week with another video.